Chapter 51. Good acting. But I can't accompany you for the next few days. The judge stretched and sat on the bed and said, There is something that needs to be dealt with by Geoku. Lu Hao joked. What's wrong? Geoki Utai sent you to apologize to someone again? Since its establishment, Geoki Utai has only apologized to you, and there will not be a second time. The judge said, as if he was expressing praise or helpless facts, and then added, Originally, this was an internal matter of our assassin's guild, but if you want to know, I can tell you. Lu Hao shrugged and said indifferently, It's not bad to listen to the story. The judge said calmly, Geoki Utai asked me to deal with a top killer problem. For many years, every assassination mission of his has never failed. Because he killed the target codenamed Night Demon, he also inherited the title of Night Demon. His name is John Wick. After hearing what the judge said, it seems that the story of John Wick is about to be staged, and the character mentioned by the tattooed girl is the protagonist. Lu Hao pretended not to have heard of this name and said to the judge, This man sounds awesome. Why does the golf table want to deal with him? He had already retired, and the golf table promised to let him live a good life. Because he fulfilled his promise, completed the impossible task killing the man named Night Devil. The judge continued. After that, his wife died, which caused him to be depressed because he had a conflict with his superior's son because of a dog. Then he returned to the rivers and lakes and killed people, and the golf table never cared about him. But in the end, he had a conflict with his token holder and killed people in a mainland hotel. He was expelled from the Assassin's Guild and a reward was offered for his arrest. Now, the reward for him is as high as 14 million US dollars, making him the most wanted target of all assassin organizations. Liu Hao nodded, recalling that this should be the plot of the third part of John Wick. The next plot will be that the protagonist John Wick begins to kill those assassins who come to assassinate but are actually looking for death. The judge said while getting dressed, Anyway, I received an order from the golf table. I'm going to find Winston at the Continental Hotel and ask him why John Wick is still alive. After all, John Wick killed the token holder in front of Winston at the Continental Hotel. If Winston wanted, John Wick would have been dead long ago. So I'm going to judge him and give Winston a week. Either he kills John Wick or he takes the position of successor. Liu Hao raised his mouth and said, John Wick will not die. No one in your assassin guild can compare with him. The judge immediately retorted, absolutely impossible. No matter how powerful John Wick is, he is just an individual and the assassins of the assassin organization are spread all over the world, thousands of them. So John will definitely die. It's just a matter of time. She said this which was completely different from how she was in bed just now. But he is the most powerful one among you, right? Liu Hao said calmly, No matter how many ants there are, they can't shake an elephant. The judge approached and touched Liu Hao's face, still expressionless. Liu Hao, I admire you and love you, but John Wick is really not worth mentioning. He is far inferior to you. Seeing that the judge was so stubborn, Liu Hao smiled and suggested, Why don't we make a bet? Bet on whether John will die. What bet? The judge raised his eyebrows. While stroking the judge, Liu Hao said, if I win, from now on, you have to use. The judge trembled, because she had never done such a thing, and she had always told Liu Hao that she would never compromise. But the judge's character is so stubborn that she doesn't believe that John Wick alone can fight against the entire killer organization. So she gritted her teeth and agreed, adding, okay, but if I win, you have to be my slave for a day. Liu Hao smiled, thinking that this girl is really good at playing. It seems that the woman who was conquered by him also has the idea of conquering himself. But Liu Hao already knew the development of the plot. So he said, Okay, it's a deal. The bet is what we said. You will lose badly, New York Light. The judge touched Liu Hao's face and left the hotel immediately. After the judge left, Liu Hao poured a glass of whiskey by the bed, took a sip, shook the ice in the glass, and said to himself, Judge, how can you, a stupid woman, understand how terrible John Wick is? He is a man with faith and will. Liu Hao understood that everything John Wick did was not just for the dog or the burnt house. He was guarding the deeper meaning behind these things, and someone who destroyed these things was destroying his faith. Therefore, he decided to make the other party pay the corresponding price without hesitation. This is very similar to Liu Hao, so Liu Hao particularly appreciates John. On the other side, at the headquarters of the Assassin's Guild, several tattooed women were processing the income and various documents brought by the guild. In a corner, an employee received a call from his superior. According to the instructions, he raised John's bounty on the bounty list to 15 million US dollars. The news spread instantly to the mobile phones of Shasho users across the country, and the judge came to Winston City to give a warning. After warning Winston, the judge went to Bowery Street and found the leader of the Assassin's Guild who was similar to the Beggar's Gang. The judge continued in a threatening tone to Winston. According to the order of the golf table, you will be given seven days. If John Wick is still alive after seven days, you have to resign. The Beggar's Gang boss insisted that he would never resign because Bowery Street had become a part of his life. Half a day later, 
The judge appeared in the territory of the Russian gypsy gang because John Wick had asked them for help. The judge representing the golf table ordered his men to teach a lesson to the big sister gypsy who protected John Wick, and then left. At the moment, the judge felt inexplicably panicked. He originally thought that John Wick would die within a day, but he escaped with the help of other forces and is now missing. She began to imagine the scene of losing the bet, and her body reacted accordingly. At Lu Hao's house, Quicksilver and Wanda sat around the dining table. Both of them looked serious, as if discussing important matters. Seeing her sister silent, Quicksilver continued. In short, this is the current situation. Although the army has not been chasing mutants for half a year, the students in the academy are still hungry and poorly clothed. Some people are finding it increasingly difficult to control their power, often losing control, and no one is taking care of them. After hearing this, Wanda frowned and responded, The current mutant academy is not as good as before. I am the only one left in the academy to deal with these things, and I am indeed a little overwhelmed. Are you going to resign? Quicksilver asked. Wanda shook her head quickly. No, definitely not. Since I am the dean of the mutant academy, I have the responsibility to protect everyone. As Wanda said, she is now the dean of the mutant academy in place of Professor X. She did not tell Lu Hao about this, and she always went to the academy secretly to take care of the students on the pretext of a business trip. The older generation of mutants were either dead or injured, and now there are only a few old mutants left in the academy, such as mentors like Shadowcat and Radiation Eye. Most of the academy are new generation mutants. Due to long-term pursuit and suppression by the army, the academy was forced to move to the primeval forest. In short, as long as I, Wanda, am still in office, I will not give up on everyone. I will be there in a while. Wanda said. Quicksilver nodded. Then I will go first, sister. Quicksilver walked to the door, opened the door and found that Lu Hao was already standing outside the door. Quicksilver was stunned, and before he could speak, Lu Hao smiled and said, Peter Luo is here? Don't you want to sit for a while? Quicksilver breathed a sigh of relief, thinking that Lu Hao did not hear his conversation with Wanda. Faced with Lu Hao's courtesy, Quicksilver hesitated and didn't know how to respond. After all, he is just a homeboy who likes to stay at home and play games, but he has an extra ability. Seeing this, Wanda answered for Quicksilver. My brother is going to a party far away, and I have to go on a business trip, so I can give him a ride. I will be back in a few days, husband. Wanda said goodbye. Lu Hao responded, Okay, be careful on the road. After the two left, Lu Hao squinted his eyes and said nothing more. He took off his coat comfortably and lay on the sofa to watch TV. Suddenly remembering the bet with the judge, he smiled slightly and prepared to enjoy the good show that was about to be staged. Seven days later, the judge arrived at the Continental Hotel. John Wick, who was missing a finger, confronted Winston. At the moment, John Wick had gone to Egypt to obtain a pardon, on the condition that he killed Winston, and vice versa. The judge walked to the two of them calmly and asked, Winston, have you decided to resign? Winston shook his head. I don't have this idea for the time being. The judge turned to John. What about you? Have you decided to use a bullet to blow Winston's head? John killed all the way here, glanced at Winston, and replied, I don't think so. Very good. The judge called the staff of the Killer Guild and asked to suspend the service of the Continental Hotel. The Continental Hotel is closed, and you can do things here now. The judge said indifferently, since Winston refuses to resign, and John Wick refuses the direct order of the golf table, your lives will be deprived. The emissaries from the golf table have arrived. They will witness the process of your souls being separated from your bodies. Gentlemen, be prepared to die. After saying that, the judge left without looking back. John Wick looked at Winston. Can I still enjoy the services of the Continental Hotel? In view of the special situation of the hotel, it is now reopened for you. John, what do you need? Winston asked. John Wick calmly replied, Guns, the more the better. The judge sat in the car downstairs of the hotel, watching the assassins sent by the golf table pour into the Continental Hotel. The judge in the car listened to the movements in the hotel, with wails and gunshots coming one after another. However, the killers continued to pour in, one wave after another. This means that John Wick is still alive. Moreover, he killed many killers in succession. The judge panicked. Is John Wick really so invincible? One night later, the judge received a call from Winston. On the other end of the phone, Winston asked to negotiate with the judge on the roof. You know this is just the beginning, and the reinforcements of the high table are endless. The judge sitting on the chair said arrogantly, As long as you don't surrender, we can keep on being deadlocked. Hearing this, Winston frowned. Are you sure that a protracted war is really the best choice? There won't be a protracted war. The judge responded coldly. The Continental Hotel will be destroyed. Don't get me wrong. You can take the Continental Hotel at any time. I have no objection. Winston changed the subject. But keeping it is another matter entirely. My followers chose this chin building. I represent the high table. Who are you? The judge said fiercely. 
The high table is definitely the supreme rule. Winston said, so I want to resolve our little differences in a more sensible way. What do you want, Winston? The judge asked. Winston glanced at the door on the roof and replied, I hope the high table will restore my power and let me regain control of this continental hotel. In the name of the high table, the judge asked. Yes, the high table is naturally the core, and I have always been a loyal believer of the high table. Winston said sincerely, I will swear allegiance to the high table again and do anything for the high table to express my loyalty. At the moment, John Wick also solved the last killer and walked to the roof. Looking at the scene in front of him, John asked in disbelief, Winston, what are you doing? Don't tell me you want to reconcile with the high table. The judge glanced at John Wick, remembered the order of the high table, and remembered the bet with Liu Hao. The latter was under too much pressure, and the temptation of the bet was too tempting. So the judge said, okay, the high table can restore your power. The premise is that you kill John Wick. Winston glanced at John and said, for the high table, I can do anything. Winston stretched out his hand and said as he walked towards Liu Hao, definitely, including killing John Wick. After that, Winston shot directly, and John blocked it with a bulletproof suit. Winston, what are you doing? We agreed. Winston ignored John's words and continued to shoot, suppressing him with firepower. John blocked with his suit and was forced to the wall. Finally, he fell from the tall building. The judge walked over and looked at John, who was lying on the ground motionless, and said, Very good, sir. The Continental Hotel is now reopened. Goodbye. John Wick is finally dead. The judge was extremely excited. Whether it was the mission of the high table or the bed of Lu Hao, she completed it. Lu Hao, you have controlled me so many times. This time it's my turn to dominate you fiercely. Looking at the back of the judge leaving, the black receptionist next to Winston whispered, Good acting, boss. Winston raised the corner of his mouth and didn't say much. The judge was calm on the surface, but excited in his heart. But what she didn't know was that John Wick, who fell from the tall building, had disappeared in a corner downstairs. The judge was very excited. Seeing that the time was almost up, before he had time to report the completion of the mission to the high table, he drove to the vicinity of the New York Police Department, waiting for Liu Kong to get off work. When Liu Hao was about to go home, he saw the judge in the car staring at him, and he was a little confused. He wondered why this girl was so proactive and started thinking about these things before she got off work. Liu Hao walked over, and before he spoke, the judge said, I won. Liu Hao became interested, raised his eyebrows, and asked, Are you talking about the bet about the top killer John Wick? Yes, he is dead. The judge still looked at Liu Hao expressionlessly. According to the bet, you have to be my slave for a day. I will whip you hard, conquer you, and make you beg for mercy all day long. Liu Hao raised the corner of his mouth and replied, Although you said it very temptingly, unfortunately, I don't like being dominated by others. You mean, you want to go back on your word? The judge frowned and asked. She didn't expect Liu Hao to regret it, definitely, Liu Hao didn't regret it, but asked back, Are you sure you won? In other words, are you sure John Wei Chin is dead? The judge looked confused and said, I saw him fall from the Continental Hotel with my own eyes. Where is the body? Has it been checked? Liu Hao asked deliberately provocatively. Seeing the judge silent, Liu Hao raised the corner of his mouth and said, Get in my car. I'll take you to see what's going on. After the judge got in the car, Liu Hao took her to the underground black market old lady who was similar to the leader of the Huajin gang. When Liu Hao brought the judge to the territory of the leader of the beggar gang, in the empty beggar gang palace, the leader of the beggar gang, Bowery, sat on the golden throne, and in front of him was the scarred John Wick. Bowery supported himself with a cane, walked to John Wick, and began to complain. That damn high table stabbed me seven times. This is what the high table does. They will find that if they want to attack the king, it is best to stab him in the vitals. Now the king is not dead. The king is very angry, John. I ask you, are you angry? John, who was covered in wounds, struggled to get up and replied fiercely, yes. The two heroes began to plan revenge on the golf table, which will become the plot of John Wick 4. Chapter 52. Destroying the Atmosphere. However, just after the conversation ended, a round of applause gradually came from the door, breaking the silence. When the applause sounded, Bowery and John were both shocked, especially Bowery, who was the most shocked. This is his territory. How dare someone be so arrogant? He muttered to himself in disbelief. It was not until they saw the judge and the burly Asian-faced man next to her that the two really widened their eyes. Just now he was still saying that he was furious and agreed to fight another day, and the next moment the other party clapped and stepped into your territory, ready to deal with you. Anyone would be confused. They exchanged glances, and Bowery quietly moved his body, ready to take out the 911 pistol that had been hidden for a long time from under the throne. As long as the pistol was in John's hand, all problems would be solved. The two were already planning to deal with Liu Hao and the judge. Fortunately, Liu Hao did not want to be their enemy. 
Otherwise, Bowery's actions just now would have been noticed and eliminated by Liu Hao. So Liu Hao said, Gentlemen, don't get excited. I'm not here to take your lives, and I'm not a member of the Assassin's Union. It's best not to try to pull out a gun. You don't know what kind of ability I have, but I don't plan to do it for the time being. After hearing this, Bowery silently retracted his hand that was touching the gun. Liu Hao walked and said, I'm from the New York Police Department. Maybe you have heard of my name. My name is Liu Qin. John, who had retired long ago, was still confused, but Bowery, who knew everything, showed a surprised expression. You are the one known as the Light of New York, Liu Hao? John was still confused. Could this guy be another version of the police, similar to himself? Seeing John's confusion, Bowery reminded. A few months ago, the Assassin's Union offered a reward for him, but in less than three days, the reward was cancelled without any reason, and they even had to apologize to him. Oh, it's you. John remembered. At that time, John was enjoying his retirement life with his girlfriend. He noticed that Liu Hao was rewarded, but the reward disappeared later. He thought he had been assassinated. The truth turned out to be that the golf table canceled the reward and paid compensation. This was the first time John had encountered such a situation in his life. He looked at the man who also had Chinese ancestry in surprise. Top killers like John have never failed, not to mention the strange thing of apologizing after the reward was canceled. But Wei Rue stared at Liu Hao and the judge and speculated. It seems that the New York Police Department has also been bought by the golf table. For someone like you, I really want to know how much money the golf table paid to let you go along with them. Bribe me? Golf table is not qualified yet. Liu Hao's slightly raised mouth corners revealed confidence. If you think that I am in the same group with golf table because I stand with the judge, then you are wrong. Liu Hao said, hugged the judge's waist and said, the one standing here is just my lover and we have no working relationship. Hearing this, both of them were stunned and Bowery exclaimed, the cold-faced woman who slashed me seven times is your lover? Bowery's eyes were full of shock, as if saying, you can handle such a woman, big brother, you are really amazing. John asked the key question. You are not from golf table nor a killer, so what are you doing here? To make someone's PY unlucky. When Liu Hao said this, the judge beside him trembled slightly. Liu Hao felt the judge's reaction, raised his mouth corners, and then said, by the way, solve your two problems. You mean, you just kill us for justice? John Wick asked. John, can you please stop thinking about killing people? Civilized society is civilized. Talking about civilization with the killer, the two were stunned. Liu Hao continued. I plan to take you two in. You will buy a house near the New York Police Department in the future. In my territory, the people from the golf table and the killer organization dare not touch you. What about the golf table? The judge asked hurriedly. What should I do? Just like you said just now, the mission is completed. John Wick is dead. Liu Hao replied. The judge looked nervous and responded. If the golf table finds out about this later, I will definitely be worse off than dead. Your back will be worse off than dead tonight. Liu Hao patted the judge's face and continued. Follow me. The people from the golf table will not dare to touch you. Do you understand? The judge heard this and could only click to buy. Then, Liu Hao looked at John and beggar gang leader Bowery and asked, How is it? Have you thought about it? The two looked at each other and then agreed. After all, John just wanted to retire and it would be nice to have a place to live. And Bowery thought that Liu Hao's ability was strong and he might be able to compete with the golf table. So he planned to find an opportunity to wait. In this way, the matter of the killer union came to an end. Except for the judge, Others were not so painful. Definitely, pain will turn into excitement and pleasure after a long time. Osborne Industrial Laboratory, New York, USA. There are more than 32,000 kinds of spiders in the world, and the order arachnid is divided into three major categories. Peter Parker and his fat friend Ned followed their classmates to visit Osborne Company. Watching the strange inventions along the way, Ned and Peter were amazed. Oh my God, that's the most famous electron microscope on the West Coast. I can't believe I can see it here. Look, look, there's that. An intelligent AI bionic arm that can perform various quick operations with just programming. Wow, what is this? A flight machine. Peter, look, this is a flight machine made by Osborne Industries. Peter and Ned, who were visiting, were so excited to see the exhibits that they danced with joy as if they had seen new toys. The other students looked bored, and it was obvious that this was not a place they were happy to come to. They couldn't even understand why Peter and Ned were so excited. Maybe this is the unique romance of technology geeks. The tour guide then introduced the characteristics of spiders. Each spider has a unique ability to find food. For example, this spider from Australia has an extraordinary jumping ability that helps it catch prey. Peter listened intently, looking at the spider in the display box, jumping a distance that was far more than four or five times its body length. He pushed his glasses and couldn't help but exclaimed, Great? What? Parker, you actually think such a small spider is better than you? Hearing Peter's exclamation, 
Flash immediately laughed loudly. You who think spiders are powerful, how useless you are. Ha ha. Flash's ridicule attracted laughter from the students around him, and Peter was at a loss. He looked around like a primary school student who had done something wrong, hesitating to explain, No, no, I mean, I think. Since Flash thinks spiders are weak, do you dare to stretch your hand over and let the spider bite you? The fat boy Ned immediately stood up for Peter. Or, in fact, you are not even as good as a spider? Flash was choked and speechless, and everyone's laughter turned to Flash, who embarrassed Peter at first. Ned helped Peter resolve the embarrassment again. Peter went forward and hugged Ned. Thanks, buddy. If it weren't for you, I would have become a laughing stock again. It's okay, Peter. Why should we be polite? Flash is a jerk, but he will only get worse. Ned put his arm around Peter's shoulders and said, And I also think spiders are cool. Flash, that idiot, doesn't know anything. As the two were chatting, they saw a black girl walking by. It was Lizzie, whom Peter had a crush on. Ned saw this and nudged Peter with his elbow. Go up, talk to her, and ask her out. You're crazy. I, I'm not going, go by yourself. Peter immediately refused. Ned had no choice but to pat Peter on the shoulder and let him handle it himself, and then went to see other exhibits. Peter stared at Lizzie, wiped his glasses, took a deep breath, and walked over. At this time, Peter didn't notice that a red spider was crawling on the spider web on the ceiling above his head. Peter knew in his heart that it was a bit frivolous to chat up with girls directly. So he took out the camera he had prepared long ago and asked, Hi, Liz, can I, can I take a picture of you, Peter? Oh, definitely. In order to avoid Liz's suspicion, Peter quickly found an excuse. Because my aunt wants to see my daily life, so I take pictures of her every time I go to a new place. Liz understood, and the embarrassment and nervousness on her face eased. Peter secretly rejoiced and began to take pictures of the goddess in his heart, focusing and putting his finger on the shutter. Just then, the red spider on the ceiling fell on the back of his neck. Peter pressed the shutter, and at the same time, the spider on the back of his neck opened its mouth and bit down. Peter slapped it subconsciously, and looking at the spider's corpse, he was stunned. F asterisk asterisk K. What is this? Peter? What's wrong with you? The black girl is asked with concern. In order to take pictures of the beautiful woman, Peter did not mention this. Nothing, a mosquito. Let's continue taking pictures. After the visit, the classmates left one after another. Peter said goodbye to Ned and took the subway home. On the subway, Peter felt something was wrong. His head was dizzy, and his hands and feet seemed to have lost control. Indistinctly, he felt that his hands and feet were about to grow spikes, and everything around him became noisy and slow. On the subway, Peter's high school classmate Flash found Peter sleeping and took a drink to play a prank. When the drink was about to touch Peter, Peter closed his eyes and slapped it away. Flash was splashed all over and cursed. Are you pretending to sleep? When he was about to fight back, Peter suddenly grabbed Flash's hand, opened his eyes, and punched him. This scene stunned both of them. At the awards ceremony in the White House in the United States, Liu Hao sat in the audience in a formal suit, and his wife Wanda was next to him. The audience was full, and Wanda was inexplicably nervous at first. But sitting next to her was a man who gave her a full sense of security. Gradually, she returned to normal and whispered to Liu Hao, I have never appeared in the same occasion with so many senior executives. Definitely, mutants' appearance here usually means there may be assassination or threats, Liu Hao thought to himself. Liu Hao gently patted Wanda's hand and comforted her, Don't worry, I am the protagonist tonight, and they are just the foil. Under the spotlight, U.S. President Trump announced the recipients of tonight's commendation. Next, please welcome the New York Police Department's Chief of Police Liu Hao, who is known as the hero of the Light of New York, and applaud and welcome him. Asterisk, 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 asterisk. Amidst the warm applause, Liu Hao slowly walked onto the stage, and Trump personally put on the medal for him and gave a speech. Liu Hao, you are really the glory of New York. Since you took over, the crime rate in New York has been declining, and even the vicious cases have almost disappeared. New York has become the safest city in American history, and your contribution is obvious to all. In addition to the Medal of Honor, the White House will also provide the New York Police Department with a $50 million reward fund. I look forward to your continued success. The future of New York depends on you. After Trump finished speaking, he shook hands with Liu Hao cordially, and then invited Liu Hao to share his acceptance speech. Liu Hao politely responded, Thank you for the President's affirmation, and thank you for everyone's recognition of me. In fact, I am not the light of New York. I am just an ordinary policeman who represents justice. Thank you. After Liu Hao finished speaking, he walked off the stage. Then, Trump continued to deliver a speech that lasted more than two hours, and the ceremony ended successfully. When he walked out of the White House, the police officers at the door lined up to welcome him. They envied and admired Liu Hao's commendation, and they also felt lucky to have such an excellent boss. Seeing the smiles on everyone's faces, 
Liu Hao raised the corners of his mouth slightly and announced, Okay, since you are so happy today, let's all have a day off tonight and enjoy ourselves. I will pay for the expenses. As soon as Liu Hao said this, the whole audience cheered. The police immediately immersed themselves in the joyful atmosphere and began to enjoy their nightlife. Queens, New York, USA. What a surprise, what a surprise. Peter exclaimed in front of the mirror in his room, unbelievable. After being bitten by a spider, Peter has been confused, but now he finally understands his changes. First of all, his senses are extremely sharp, his hearing is far better than that of ordinary people, and his vision has miraculously recovered, and he no longer needs glasses. Oh, Peter, who has never exercised, has a strong body overnight. He looks thin when dressed and has muscles when undressed, and his fist strength has increased greatly. The most important thing is that he can climb, like a lizard or a spider. He can easily climb up any adsorbent surface by sticking to clothes. Peter is very excited at this moment. He feels full of power. Last time, he punched Flash into the hospital on the subway with one punch, and Aunt May scolded him severely for this. At this time, Peter accidentally found a flyer for an underground boxing match in his school bag. Underground boxing match. Win one match and get $20,000, double it for three matches, the prize money is getting bigger and bigger, there is no upper limit. Peter looked at the flyer, then looked at his fist as big as a casserole, and resolutely decided, go and give it a try. Unlike other players, Peter does not need special training to participate in boxing matches. He only needs to do one thing, find a costume to cover up his true identity. So he buried his head in design, and three days later, a set of classic red and blue tight cotton coats was born. Peter came to the underground boxing match and found the registration point to register. The aunt saw him and smiled. I don't have a place for a lightweight wrestler like you here. You are not looking for him. 17. No, no, no. I don't distinguish between levels. Just let me participate. I'm not afraid of anyone. Peter said firmly. The aunt shrugged and said, Well, anyway, we have signed a life and death agreement, and it has nothing to do with us if something happens. On the boxing ring, the host introduced the wrestler who had won seven consecutive games to liven up the atmosphere. Bone Saw McGraw has eliminated another opponent. Who will be the next one? Can the next challenger defeat Bone Samagra and win the $100,000 cumulative prize? Let's welcome the next contestant. The host stepped back in front of Peter who was about to appear and asked, Young man, what is your nickname? Peter cleared his throat and replied, I am the human-shaped spider. What the hell? The human-shaped spider? Is this the bad name you came up with? The host couldn't help complaining. Yeah, I think it's cool. Peter responded in a low voice. The human-shaped spider this name? The host directly sprayed. It's so bad and so stupid. The host is a professional atmosphere maker, and mentioning such a bad name will ruin the atmosphere. So the host ignored Peter's nickname, picked up the microphone again, and said to the audience, The one who will fight against Bonesaw McGraw is New York's most famous war god, the dream partner of women and the lifelong idol of men. Friends. The host successfully pushed the atmosphere to a climax. Let us welcome this agility, strength, and skills, extraordinary Spider-Man. The curtain opened, and Peter wearing a red and blue tights, appeared in front of the audience. Extraordinary Spider-Man? Peter looked confused and whispered. I clearly said it was a humanoid spider. However, looking at the enthusiastic response of the audience, it was obvious that they liked this name, and Peter quickly accepted it. Forget it, it doesn't matter, Spider-Man is Spider-Man. The word, extraordinary, is too exaggerated, so just remove it. Just like that, Peter accepted the name and walked slowly onto the ring. When passing through the passage, the muscular women of the opposite camp, the so-called Bone Saw McGraw held microphones and kept taunting him from head to toe. Bone Saw McGraw will tear you to pieces, you ignorant little piece of trash. You are nothing. Bone Saw will tear out your thin legs one by one. What Spider-Man? You are just a loser. Chapter 53 You're wrong. The Bone Saw will eat you alive, little guy. I hope your mom is here, because in two minutes you will be looking for her all over the world, begging her to comfort you. A useless little thing. Peter ignored the group of muscle women and the unwise audience who threw things at him. Peter's eyes were still on the player who was severely injured by the Bonesaw McGraw in the previous game. At this moment, he was lying on a stretcher, shouting at the top of his lungs, My legs! I can't feel my legs! Take me to the hospital! Peter was panicking. After all, he was just a high school student who had never fought. However, feeling the power surging in his body, Peter decided to go head to head. The audience cheered for the Bonesaw and Peter stepped over the ropes and stepped into the ring. Entering the ring, he saw a huge amount of iron frames slowly descending, spreading out in all directions, instantly surrounding the entire ring, forming an octagonal cage. Peter suddenly became nervous and hurried to the sidelines and shouted, Hey, friends, you must have made a mistake. 
I signed up for a boxing match, not this iron cage match. Let me out. You made a mistake. Behind Peter, Bonesaw McGraw sneered and said coldly, You have nowhere to escape, little freak. Peter slowly turned around and faced the muscular man, who stared at him with disdain. Peter swallowed his saliva subconsciously, and this action aroused Bonesaw's interest. In just three minutes, Bonesaw stretched out his hands and made a provocative gesture. I can make you covered in bruises, make you kneel down and beg for mercy, look for your mother, and make me happy, little trash. At the moment, a three-minute countdown lit up above the audience. Peter then realized that the rule of the game was that as long as you persisted for three minutes, you would win. Come on, Peter. You can do it. You can definitely last three minutes. He encouraged himself. Bonesaw McGraw didn't say much. After mocking Peter, he immediately rushed forward and planned to give him a hug. In a panic, Peter used his extraordinary spider sense to respond with one, two, seven, and jumped lightly. The next moment, Peter found himself hanging on the top of the iron cage, with his hands clinging to the iron cage as if they were glued. He was very surprised, and remembered the ridicule of Bonesaw, and imitated him to reply, Wow, your shirt is really nice. Is it sewn by your husband? You kid. You're dead. Bonesaw McGraw was furious and shook the iron cage to throw Peter off. Peter saw this and kicked Bonesaw in the forehead. Bonesaw regained his composure and rushed towards Peter with his fists. Get out, get out, get out. Little bastard. You're in trouble. Under McGraw's continuous combination punches, Peter dodged flexibly with his spider reaction. Peter tripped McGraw and was very excited. He had never been so happy in his life. Just as he was about to pursue the victory, McGraw, who was unscrupulous, suddenly took out an iron rod from the corner and smashed it at Peter. You use weapons? That's not fair. Peter stretched out his hand to block the attack. However, the pain temporarily made him lose spider telepathy, allowing McGraw to hit him several times with the iron rod. Peter was hit on the back and said in pain, My back! Peter fell to the ground, and the angry McGraw was about to hit Peter with the iron rod. At the critical moment, Peter kicked out with all his strength, and McGraw trembled. You guy! McGraw didn't believe it, and rushed forward again. Unexpectedly, Peter kicked again, and the whirlwind-like leg skills attacked violently, three consecutive kicks. In the end, McGraw fell to the ground because he was kicked in the same part continuously, and the audience was stunned. The referee hurried forward to check on McGraw's condition. Bonesaw McGraw? Are you okay? Can you hear me? Finding that McGraw could not respond, the referee signaled to the host that McGraw could no longer fight. The host immediately announced, Bonesaw McGraw lost consciousness and can't continue. Ladies and gentlemen, Spider-Man won this game. Peter wore a mask and laughed from ear to ear. He cheered like a child. I won. In the enthusiastic atmosphere of the host and the audience, Peter came to the backstage finance department to collect the prize money. The staff of the finance department took out a stack of banknotes and took out $1,000 bills and put them in front of Peter. Peter smiled and waited for more, but the staff glanced at him and said unceremoniously, Let's go. What else are you looking at? What? Only these? Peter looked confused. His smile froze and asked, Sir, are you mistaken? You said that winning the match can get tens of millions of dollars. Boy, do you understand the rules? The middle-aged man said to Peter impatiently, the rule is to play against the winning streak players, last three minutes, or defeat the opponent. But you kicked McGraw, and you are still in the hospital. We lost a lot of money because of this. Giving you 1,000 is already very generous. Get out of here. The middle-aged man tried to send Peter away. What? You can't play like this? Please, sir. I really need the money. Peter begged. The middle-aged man snorted coldly and replied, What does this have to do with me? Peter clenched his fists, said nothing, put away the thousand dollars, and walked to the door. Suddenly. Peter passed by a masked man with a weapon in the crowd. He saw him aiming at the middle-aged man in the finance department and shouting, Hand over all the money? This robbery was staged in front of Peter, but Peter was indifferent. Until the police arrived and the robber was about to escape, Peter still stood still. Stop him, kid. Don't let him run away. The police shouted loudly. Peter stared at the robber. The middle-aged man's voice just echoed in his ears, but he still did not move. When the robber fled, he thanked Peter but the police came a step late and scolded Peter. What are you doing? You let him run away? The police were not in a position to blame the high school student too much, so they left the scene. The man from the finance department followed closely and questioned Peter. With your ability, you can easily subdue him. Why did you let him escape? Peter's mouth curled up slightly, and his eyes revealed a trace of relief. What does this have to do with me? Peter left the underground boxing match with great relief. As soon as he went out, Peter heard the sirens. Looking around the street, Four or five police cars whizzed by, and the crowds gathered nearby. Peter had a bad feeling, so he squeezed into the crowd to join in the fun. 
Pushing through the crowd, Peter was stunned. Uncle Ben fell in a pool of blood, breathing weakly. Uncle Ben. Peter stepped forward and held Uncle Ben's hand. Eleven. Uncle Ben opened his mouth, as if he wanted to say something, but finally fainted weakly. Peter's eyes widened, and tears could not stop flowing. At this time, a hand gently rested on his shoulder. Peter turned his head slightly and saw the person who came, Lu Hao. Mr. Lu Hao. Peter remembered that he had met Lu Hao when he worked part-time in a pizza shop, but he was not in the mood to reminisce at the moment. Lu Hao patted Peter's back to comfort him. Peter, with tears on his face, wanted to say something. Mr. Lu Hao. I, my uncle. He is my uncle. I understand. Lu Hao said gently and solemnly. I will find the culprit who caused all this. After that, Lu Hao instructed the police to take care of Peter and deal with Uncle Ben's affairs as soon as possible, and he drove away. According to the tracking police report, Lu Hao has determined that the robber is hiding in an abandoned building. Lu Hao's eyes flashed a trace of ferocity, and he accelerated to chase the criminal. Sirs rang through the streets, and the robber who shot Uncle Ben quietly hid in the abandoned building. He peeked out in the dark and couldn't help feeling scared. After all, it was the first time he shot and injured someone, and accidentally caused death. Damn it! What bad luck! I would have succeeded, but if it weren't for that stupid old man's obstruction, I would have escaped long ago. The robber cursed Uncle Ben, and the sound unconsciously entered the ears of Lu Hao, who had extraordinary hearing. Lu Hao drove his private car to the destination, stepped into the abandoned building, and approached the robber step by step. Other policemen need to be on guard with guns when entering such a place, but Lu Hao does not need to do so. Here, he can release his super ability. Originally, he just wanted to help little Spider-Man settle this matter. He did not expect the robber to be so arrogant. How can he not teach this guy a lesson? The robber in the dark heard Lu Hao's steel-like footsteps and gradually retreated timidly, but he did not know that Lu Hao, who had the thermal imaging ability, had already locked him. Lu Hao observed his every move like reading an exam paper, watching his ignorance and funny. The robber noticed that Lu Hao was close at hand. He did not want to kill him, but the development of the situation could not allow it. Go to hell. The robber took the opportunity to shoot. Bang. The fire flickered, illuminating the front of Lu Hao. The robber was surprised to find that Lu Hao was still moving forward. What's the matter? Did it miss? Bang. The robber shot again, aiming at Lu Hao's chest. This time, he saw clearly how the first bullet was bounced off Lu Hao's body. What the hell? What kind of monster are you? Lu Hao walked up to the robber, stretched out his hand and easily strangled the other's neck and lifted him up. The robber looked at Lu Hao in fear, but Lu Hao didn't look at him and threw him out of the third floor. The robber was thrown out of the window by Lu Hao, and he was still confused when he landed. Then, his legs hurt so much that he was almost paralyzed. What the hell is this? Before the robber finished scolding, Lu Hao had walked out of the building. How did he go downstairs so quickly? Could he be? Before the robber finished his guess, Lu Hao kicked him unconscious. In this way, others will only think you are talking nonsense because of a concussion. Lu Hao handcuffed the robber, threw him into the car with one hand, and then drove to the scene to have someone take the robber away. Little Spider-Man Peter Yee Parker sat on the street, confused and at a loss. Lu Hao walked over to Peter and sat down. There was a hot barbecue pizza next to him. He said, Pizza, I don't know what flavor you like. Barbecue should be right. Thank you, Mr. Lu Hao, but I have no appetite now. Little Spider-Man replied politely and then said, I saw you arrest that criminal with my own eyes. He turned out to be the robber of that underground boxing match. Lu Hao bit the pizza in his hand carelessly, and he was tired of hearing Spider-Man's story. Peter continued, He was standing in front of me at the time, and even the police chasing him expected me to help catch him. At that time, I had the opportunity to stop him. I had the ability, but I? After eating the pizza, Lu Hao prepared to preach to Peter as a mentor. People can't be resurrected after death, and the facts of the past cannot be changed but we can learn lessons from them. Lessons? Peter repeated in a low voice, and then said, Yes, uncle once said that the greater the ability, the greater the responsibility, and people with ability should do something. Thinking of this, Peter looked at Lu Hao, Mr. Lu Hao, I remember you said the same thing. No, you said it earlier than Uncle Ben. Could it be that Uncle Ben was inspired by you? Lu Hao had indeed mentioned this truth to little Spider-Man before. At this moment, he could claim this famous saying as his own, but it was really not kind enough to do so. So, Lu Hao gently put his hand on Peter's shoulder. Your uncle should not have heard of this sentence I said. As for why you all said this at the same time, maybe it's because your uncle is a person who thinks similarly to me. We also hope that you can become such a person. Hearing this, Peter's eyes were filled with tears. He seemed to see the shadow of his uncle in Lu Hao. Peter hugged Lu Hao without hesitation. He already regarded Lu Hao as an elder. Then, Lu Hao took Peter to the New York Police Department to rest. When the atmosphere was right, 
Liu Hao started to talk business. Peter, are you willing to join the New York Police Department? What? Join the police department? Peter was shocked. But I haven't graduated from high school yet, and being a policeman, high school education is not important. Since I invited you, leave everything to me. Liu Hao said slowly. As for not wanting to be a policeman, in fact, your main job is not to arrest people or patrol. What do you mean? What does Mr. Liu Hao want me to do? Peter was still immersed in the grief of losing his uncle and was a little confused. After all, joining the police department but not being a policeman is indeed puzzling. Liu Hao guessed that little Spider-Man would have questions and explained directly. I saw your information when I was investigating your uncle's files. Peter, you are very smart, even a genius. Your understanding of biology is many times beyond your peers, so you have won many awards. Also, I heard that you are recently developing a concentrated substance that can quickly change from liquid to solid. This is a great idea. Oh, really? Thank you, Mr. Liu Hao. My teachers and classmates all think this is a useless invention. Peter was a little disappointed at first, then corrected. Oh, not everyone. Ned has always supported me. Ned is my best friend. He is always by my side. And our time in school is... Peter's topic gradually went off track, causing Liu Hao to stroke his forehead and sigh. This Spider-Man is like Deadpool. He talks endlessly. No wonder fans and officials always pair them up. Peter realized that he had talked too much and quickly asked. For point nine, I'm sorry, Mr. Liu Hao, did I say too much? Young people, it's okay. Active thinking is a good thing, and that's why I want to invite you. In order to prevent Spider-Man from wasting time chatting, Liu Hao said directly. The New York Police Department plans to build a laboratory and you can join us and conduct any experiment you want there. Any experiment? Peter was excited and embarrassed when he heard this and asked, Do I need to pay for the experiment myself? I didn't ask you to pay out of your own pocket. I will pay your salary. Liu Hao saw Peter so excited and explained with a smile. Finally, Liu Hao said bluntly, In the laboratory, you can concentrate on studying your super abilities, which are the strange changes caused by spider bites. What? Mr. Liu Hao, how did you? Peter asked in surprise. Liu Hao calmly replied, You don't have to worry about this, you just need to know that I stand by you, and I will unconditionally support you in everything. Peter became more and more excited, asking about schoolwork and vacations. Only after Liu Hao promised to help solve them did Peter feel relieved. In this way, Spider-Man Peter Parker joined Liu Hao's New York Police Department. Later, Liu Hao arranged for Banner to lead the team to deal with matters related to the New York Laboratory. Since both of them joined because of Liu Hao, he found that these two superheroes who had a little knowledge of science got along well. Then there was the problem of dealing with the robber who killed Peter's uncle. In the United States, it is not uncommon for small hooligans to carry guns. But in today's peaceful New York City, this is a big problem. Killing people with guns on the streets of New York, especially when Liu Hao had just accepted the white writing of the book. This kind of thing is undoubtedly a slap in Liu Hao's face. It seems that New York has to face not only the problem of reducing the crime rate, but the more fundamental problem of gangs. Liu Hao thought to himself, and took out a file from the drawer of his desk. It recorded a man named Kim Bull. Chapter 54 You come in person, or you will bear the consequences. Liu Hao dialed the number, and the other party was the biggest gangster in the United States, Jean Bing. He said bluntly, Tomorrow at 8 o'clock, the Japanese restaurant near the Empire State Building, you come in person, otherwise you will bear the consequences. Without waiting for Jean Bing to respond, Liu Hao hung up the phone. Jean Bing was furious, and the phone in his hand was instantly crushed into pieces, and the veins on his broad face were prominent. However, thinking that the person on the other end of the phone was Liu Hao, Jian Bing still asked his men to get a new phone and ordered. Book the Japanese restaurant in the Empire State Building tomorrow, and rent it out. At 8 o'clock the next morning, Liu Hao arrived as scheduled, and Jian Bing was already waiting. Sheriff Liu Hao, you have been very angry recently. Didn't you just receive a commendation from President Trump? Jian Bing, who was sitting in the most luxurious seat, asked, Did someone make you unhappy again? Liu Hao raised his lips, thinking that Jian Bing was quite sensible. So he said bluntly, Yes, someone has made me angry. Now I am very angry and must solve this problem. Seeing this, Jean asked, Which force has angered you? Tell me, I will definitely help you to settle it if I can. It's you. Liu Hao pointed at his forehead. And your gang in New York and all your subordinates have angered me. Jean Bing heard this and silently clenched his fists, but suppressed his anger and didn't let his expression show. He didn't dare to be presumptuous in front of Liu Hao. Even if he was unhappy, he could only bear it. He forced a smile and asked, Not really, Sheriff Liu Hao. My Jean Bing's forces in New York are very well behaved. How could they make you unhappy? Your organization is very well behaved. Liu Hao took a sip of tea, but your subordinates are not all like that. Tell me, why would your so-called peaceful subordinates shoot and kill people on the street? The shooting happened on the night when the president gave me the award. Are you slapping me in public? 
Liu Hao stared at Jin Bing coldly. His eyes seemed to be able to spit fire, making Jin Bing tremble. As the boss, Jin Bing still suppressed his anger and maintained a negotiating posture. Although I don't know why there is such a disobedient boy in the New York organization, since the problem lies with me, Jin Bing, I will go back and teach them a lesson and give you an explanation. Hearing this, Liu Hao raised his mouth slightly and said, Jin Bing, do you really think you can get rid of me with just a few words? Definitely more than that. Jin Bing said hurriedly, I will compensate the New York Police Department with 500,000 US dollars as an apology, in the name of my little brother. Jin Bin thought that Liu Hao's trip was nothing more than money, and he controlled the entire New York gang. Money was not a problem for him. He was worried that Liu Hao would have other requests. However, Liu Hao supported his chin and shook his head. Not enough. If it's not enough, you can add more. One million or two million is not a problem. As long as you don't pursue it, I have no objection. Jin Bing promised readily. Liu Hao asked again. Did I say it was a money problem? Jean was unhappy, but still asked patiently, Then how do you think it can be solved? One month. Liu Hao stretched out a finger. Jean was puzzled. One month? What do you mean? Liu Hao pushed the teacup and sushi in front of him to Jean Bing. Withdraw your forces in New York for one month. Hearing this, Jean Bing's face was convex with blue veins, and the chopsticks holding the salmon were instantly broken by him. With a sullen face, he finally couldn't help but said in a deep voice, If it's money, I can handle it but let my forces leave New York? Stop the black and white business for a month. I am losing money every minute and every second. Your request is too much, Chief Lu Hao. Jin Bing crossed his arms to show that he did not agree with the compensation. In Jin Bing's view, in a negotiation, if one party is strongly dissatisfied, the other party must lower the conditions. This trick has been tried and tested, no matter who the other party is. However, Jin Bing had misunderstood the nature of this meeting from the beginning. I'm not here to negotiate with you at all. Liu Hao held the chopsticks and looked at Jin Bing. I'm just here to inform you. Before he finished speaking, the chopsticks flew like a hidden weapon and pierced Jin's palm. Jin Bing had muscles all over his body, but his palm could not resist, and severe pain came instantly. When he was paying attention to the injury on his palm, the table suddenly turned over and hit Jin Bing. When he came to his senses, Jin had been pressed tightly to the ground by the Japanese dining table and Liu Hao's feet, unable to move. Jin Bing tried to break free, but found that his burly body could not shake Liu Hao, and he couldn't even move at all. Like I said, I'm just here to inform you. Liu Hao stepped on Jin Bing, bent slightly, and then said, Your forces, whether they are underworld or white, must leave New York for a month. If you are not satisfied, I can change people at any time. Did you hear clearly, boss Jin Bing? Being stepped on, Jin Bing was extremely angry, but he could only utter one sentence. I understand. Liu Hao relaxed his legs, and then kicked over the table. Jin Bing's brief resistance ended with less than five minutes of begging for mercy. Jin Bing struggled to stand up, and could only watch Liu Hao's back gradually disappear at the door of the Japanese restaurant. Jin Bing, who stayed where he was, had no choice. He took out his mobile phone and called the head of the New York gang. Justin, before tomorrow, let all the brothers in New York leave the city. What? Justin was shocked and hurriedly explained, Boss, now is the time for our business to recover. It will be a big loss if we leave tonight. If I say withdraw, you have to withdraw. Business is shit. I have the final say. Anyone who disobeys will be killed as a warning to the monkey. General Jean, who had just been taught a lesson by Liu Hao, vented his anger on the small leader. Justin on the other end of the phone heard this and dared not talk back, only replied, Got it? Um. After hanging up the phone with his subordinates, Jean Bien stood there, silently estimating the losses of this month. Then, he remembered something and dialed another person's number, with the note Norman Osborne. In the building of Osborne Industrial Group, the boardroom. Since Stark Industries closed its weapons department, Osborne Group has surpassed it and become the main supplier of the U.S. military. Norman Osborne sat in the chairman's position and said to the other directors, In short, ladies and gentlemen, board of directors, now the group's costs are down, profits are up, and the stock price is at an unprecedented height. We are steadily cooking. Well said, Norman. The white-haired man opposite agreed. However, recently a major investor intends to withdraw its investment. What did you say? Norman was stunned and asked hurriedly, Withdraw investment at this time? Which idiot? Didn't you receive his call? Asked the vice chairman. Mr. Jean Bing has informed us this morning that he wants to withdraw investment. Although we tried our best to retain him, he was determined. Hearing this, Norman quickly checked his phone and found that Jean Bing did call, but he didn't answer. Jean Bing withdrew investment at this critical moment? This is a big investor. Once he leaves, Osborne Group may not be able to continue research and development and must give up other departments. Norman whispered, R&D funds are needed now. How can the R&D department continue to operate? Mr. Jean Bing's investment has a great impact on the progress of R&D. Once he withdraws his investment, 
I don't know when the R&D department's experiments will be successful, the white-haired deputy director suggested. Otherwise, we sacrifice the R&D of some departments and let other departments keep up with the progress. Otherwise, it will only cause the company to suffer unnecessary losses. Norman nodded and asked everyone's opinions. Now we need funds. Which department do you think should be closed? Everyone began to discuss. One of the female directors looked through the information of each department and proposed. How about closing Connors' biological department? I agree. Another male director immediately agreed and gave a reason. Connors has been studying biological DNA integration into the human body and biological regeneration in the biological department for many years, but there has been no progress. I am not targeting Connors. If the company has sufficient budget, he can continue the experiment. But now the company is facing a shortage of R&D funds. I think this department can be closed. Norman nodded and continued. Everyone voted and agreed to close Connors' biological department. After voting, the directors unanimously chose to close Connors' department. Norman was originally optimistic about Connors' experiment, but seeing the majority vote, he had no choice but to obey. So, Connors' biological department was forced to shut down. A few days later, a man in white with a broken arm walked slowly into the laboratory of the biological department of the Osborne Group. He looked at every instrument in the laboratory and said regretfully, It's a pity, there is only one last step. After the man finished looking at the instrument, he turned to the mouse injected with the drug. Why is it always unsuccessful? It's obviously just this last step away, and I can complete the cross-gene biological cell regeneration technology. Connors clenched his fists and said angrily, As long as I complete this research, the company will pay attention to me again, and my hand will have a chance to be reborn. But time is running out, and fate is not good. In the end, everything came to a sudden stop before the last step. Connors passed a two-way mirror and stretched out his hand. The image of the other hand was reflected in the mirror, which made him fascinated. Connors looked at his hand and then looked up at the unfinished biological drug in the experimental cabin. In an instant, a dangerous idea emerged in his mind, and he decided to use himself as an experiment. With such determination, Connors plucked up the courage to walk into the laboratory, picked up the unfinished drug, and injected it into his arm fiercely. The moment the drug was injected, the severe pain rushed straight to Connors' brain, and the strong stimulation made him tremble all over and gradually lose control of his body. Afterwards, Connors collapsed under the chair. The pain made him spasm on the ground like a fish out of water. It lasted for more than 10 minutes, and Connors calmed down. Not long after, a huge amount of lizard-like hand slapped on the desk in the laboratory. Dr. Connors turned into a giant humanoid lizard with red eyes, wantonly destroying the laboratory. While destroying, Dr. Lizard's eyes swept across the job list posted on the wall, which listed the doctors of the department and the directors of various companies. Dr. Lizard stretched out his hands, grasped the list tightly, and slid his clawed fingers from the bottom up. Finally, his fingers stopped on the second-to-last name, and then he growled, Vice Director, and that female director. Connors knew nothing about the board's decision, but he vaguely remembered that people in the department mentioned these two people. Anger burned in Connor's heart, and vague memories told him that the two were on a business trip to the other side of New York. Dr. Lizard clenched his fists, smashed through the window, and jumped from the fourth floor. He ran wildly on the streets of New York, Lightning eagerly searched for the traces of the vice director and the female director. Coincidentally, there was a traffic jam on a bridge that the vice director and the female director had to pass through, and Dr. Lizard knew they would pass through here. So he also came to the bridge and started throwing cars off the bridge one by one. The pedestrians were terrified, and some unlucky ones were thrown off the bridge before they could even be surprised. Countless passers-by fell to the bottom of the bridge with their cars, waiting for the judgment of fate. At the moment, the silver-haired vice director and the female director got out of the car out of curiosity, looked behind them, and exclaimed, Oh my God! What is that? Lizard? Unexpectedly, Dr. Lizard Connors also found them at the same time. After finding the target, Dr. Lizard became more violent, no longer throwing cars, and directly stepped on the car and rushed towards the directors. The two directors tried to escape, but their speed was far slower than that of the speeding Dr. Lizard. Just when Dr. Lizard was about to destroy them and the car, gunshots suddenly rang out, and bullets rained down on Dr. Lizard. Seeing the police, Dr. Lizard said viciously, Since you think I am a monster, let's become monsters together. Then, he crushed the potion and released the gaseous potion into the air. It fell at his feet. Instantly, the police and some passersby also became like monsters, and Dr. Lizard quickly fled the scene. Although the infected were not as violent as Dr. Lizard, they were also twitching wildly. Others had no choice but to tie them up and call an ambulance. Soon, the ambulance and the fire department arrived at 930 and rescued the trapped people under the bridge. New York Police Department At this moment, Liu Hao was discussing the construction of the laboratory with Banner in the office. 
Banner made a suggestion, and Liu Hao was thinking about whether it was necessary to adopt it. In fact, there was a third person in the office, that is, little Spider-Man Peter Yi Parker, who was silently studying cobweb on the side. He was immersed in various formula reasoning. That's it, Brother Fong. I think the scale should be larger, so that we can expand research and Banner's voice had not fallen, and the door of the office was suddenly knocked. Liu Hao responded with, come in, and the police officer Chen Long opened the door and said, Brother Fong, something happened. Don't worry, talk slowly. What happened? Liu Hao asked. Chen Long calmed down and continued. A citizen called the police. A lizard monster, as big as a dinosaur, appeared on the L Bridge. Liu Hao frowned slightly when he heard this. Not because he was afraid. After all, DR. Lizard was nothing. He was wondering how the Dutch version of Spider-Man in this Marvel universe would encounter the villain DR. Lizard. Liu Hao glanced at the little Spider-Man, and the immature Peter E. Parker was obviously not the tall Garfield Spider-Man. It seems that the Spider-Man in this universe is the integrate of the worldviews of three generations. Liu Hao secretly speculated and came to this hypothesis. Chen Long at the door thought Liu Hao didn't believe it, and quickly added, Many people called the police. We have sent people to investigate and found that what they said was true. There was indeed a dinosaur-like, giant lizard on the L Bridge at that time. Although we finally drove the monster away, the strange potion it used also infected our colleagues. Now we don't know what to do at all. This matter is a bit serious. I must consult you. Liu Hao crossed his arms and silently recalled the plot development of The Amazing Spider-Man, DR. Lizard's name is Connors Curtis. He is a doctor in the biological research department of the Oscar group. Later, for unknown reasons and his obsession with his arms, he injected the lizard potion. Next, he will increase the dosage of the lizard potion to strengthen himself, and then make the developed potion into gas, intending to turn all the people in New York into lizard monsters. Although I can subdue him directly, someone needs to make an antidote. It's too slow to go directly to the people of the Osborne group, and I'm not sure if they can make this antidote. While Liu Hao was thinking, a middle-aged man in police uniform walked into the office and said to him, Hello, Chief Liu Hao, I am George Stacy from the Washington Police Department. I want to ask about the L Bridge. George Stacy, if I'm not mistaken, is Gwen's father in The Amazing Spider-Man, and a policeman like himself. In the original setting, he was the chief of the New York Police Department, but now because of Liu Hao's existence, he can only retreat to Washington. And this bridge is located at the junction of Washington and New York. So George will appear and ask Liu Hao about the situation. Chapter 55 Joining the New York Police Department Hello, Mr. George, it's me. I'm Peter Parker, your daughter Gwen Stacy's classmate. Peter hurriedly greeted. George Stacy was even more confused and asked, Peter, why are you here? You are wearing a police uniform, are you also a policeman? Yes, thanks to Mr. Liu Hao's kindness, I joined the New York Police Department and became a member. Peter scratched his head a little shy. After Peter and George Stacy exchanged greetings, Liu Hao asked Chen Long to briefly summarize the incident to Chief George and said that he would leave it to him to handle it. After George Stacy left, Liu Hao found Peter and asked, By the way, Peter, you just said that Gwen Stacy is your classmate, right? She seems to be interning at Osborne Group, if I remember correctly. Peter was stunned for a moment, not understanding why Liu Hao mentioned this, but still answered, Yes, my classmate Gwen, she is interning at Osborne Group. But how did Mr. Liu Hao know? Why did you suddenly ask about this? I have seen her at Osborne Group. Her name is on her work permit. Your chat with her father just now reminded me of this. I mentioned Gwen because the lizard monster is likely to be Connors Curtis of Osborne Group, the head of the department where your classmate is. Liu Hao said calmly. Now we need to make a potion that can restore the infected to normal. Since your classmate Gwen works under Connors, maybe she can help. If you have her contact information, ask her if she is free to make the antidote and send it to the police station. Peter nodded. He did have Gwen's phone number, which Ned had helped him get before. But Peter was a coward and had a goddess in his heart, so he didn't contact Gwen much. But now the situation was critical, and it was Liu Hao's request, so Peter had to call her and explain the situation. Peter continued to communicate with Gwen stutteringly, but soon after, he looked at the hung-up phone with a confused face. What happened? Liu Hao asked. Peter held the phone and said with a slobbery head, Gwen said she knew that the lizard monster was Connors a long time ago. She said that she felt something was wrong in the company recently. When Connors turned into a lizard monster, he mentioned to her in a joking way that when the potion was successfully developed, he would use it to benefit mankind. So Gwen is now developing an antidote at the Osborne Group and can't come for the time being. She said that she would send a copy to the New York Police Department after the antidote is completed. Liu Hao nodded, then stood up from the chair and asked Peter to help him convey the order and send several teams to evacuate the crowd to prevent them from wandering on the streets. Liu Hao himself left the police station, and in a corner where no one noticed, he transformed into a red and blue Superman and rushed into the sky, aiming directly at the Osborne Group building. Osborne Group, Biological Department, 
Biological Transbase Cell Regeneration Laboratory. Gwyn, a blonde beauty in a white lab coat, was preparing the antidote for the lizard potion in an empty laboratory. When Gwen saw the news about Dr. Lizard, she rushed over immediately. She knew best that it was Connors from the biological department who was destroying the streets. His obsession with biological regeneration experiments had reached a crazy level, and Gwen had to stop him. Gwen put the prepared potion into the instrument, watched the instrument run, and was overjoyed. It will be done in ten minutes. At this time, Gwen heard noise coming from inside the building, and the monster's roar was particularly harsh in the quiet Osborne building. Gwen knew that Dr. Lizard had come, and in a panic, she saw the smoke alarm on the ceiling. She remembered that once the smoke alarm sounded, the laboratory would automatically close. Gwen was quick-witted and used a lighter to light the alarm. The alarm, sensing the fire, immediately activated the switch and shut down the entire laboratory, while Gwen hid. Half a minute later, Dr. Lizard arrived. It tore open the door of the laboratory with one claw, walked step-by-step step to the antidote, and pressed the pause button. Oh no! Gwen secretly said that it was not good and planned to continue researching the antidote after Dr. Lizard left. Unexpectedly, Dr. Lizard seemed to sense someone nearby and came directly to Gwen's hiding place. Dr. Lizard turned around in front of Gwen for a few times and left. Gwen breathed a sigh of relief. I see you. Dr. Lizard retreated and directly grabbed Gwen's hiding place with one claw. The moment the claw was about to touch Gwen, tearing air sounds sounded in the air. Gwen closed her eyes in fear. At the same time, tearing air sounds sounded in the air followed by huge amounts of crashing sounds. Gwen closed her eyes and opened them after finding no movement, but the ugly Dr. Lizard was gone. Instead, there was a man standing in front of her, wearing a blue tights and a red cape. He had a perfect figure like an ancient Greek sculpture and was the superhero known to the whole world. Superman, and where was Dr. Lizard? He had been punched into the wall by Liu Hao and could not move. Faced with all this, Gwen covered her mouth in disbelief and opened her eyes wide. Superman, does it really exist? Just kidding, this is Superman, the most famous superhero in the world, and has even become synonymous with heroes. This not only attracted countless teenagers, but also definitely made girls dream of becoming Lois, looking forward to this upright and upright person. Superhero rescues you at the critical moment. Gwen also dreamed of becoming Lois when she was a child, and hoped that Superman would appear when she was in danger. But now Gwen is 18 years old, and she prefers to believe in science. But now, her childhood dream is standing in front of her. It is exactly the same as described in the comics. This will make anyone who sees it stunned. Liu Hao, transformed into Superman, hovered in the air, gently tilted his head to look at Gwen. Seeing the youthful vitality on the face of the 18-year-old blonde girl, he couldn't help but raise his mouth and said, I'll let you take a good look at it sometime. But now, shouldn't you continue to run the antidote equipment? Gwen was reminded by Liu Hao, and hurriedly got up and walked to the instrument and began to type the startup code on the keyboard. I was still thinking about Liu Hao's playful words just now. Oh my god. Superman's words are so beautiful. Dr. Lizard heard Liu Hao asking Gwen to continue studying the potion and hurriedly got out of the wall and ran towards Gwen. However, Liu Hao could how let Dr. Lizard succeed. He grabbed Dr. Lizard's tail and threw him out of the window like a whip. With a loud bang, Dr. Lizard fell heavily to the ground. He stood up immediately without any injury and tried to escape. But just as he took a step, tearing air sounds suddenly sounded and in just 10 seconds, Superman Liu Hao was standing in front of Dr. Lizard, with his red cape fluttering in the wind. Dr. Lizard was furious and punched Liu Hao in the abdomen. Then his wrist was broken, and he stepped back in shock. What? Do you have any other tricks to show me? Liu Hao raised the corners of his mouth and looked down at Dr. Lizard. Dr. Lizard gritted his teeth, took out five bottles of potions from his waist and threw them on the ground, and green smoke instantly surrounded Superman Liu Hao. Smell it. Inhale it. This is the taste of fear. Ha 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 ha. It won't be long before you will be like me. You? Dr. Lizard was stunned halfway through his words because Superman was inhaling the green smoke like smoking. Liu Hao's nostrils blew green smoke and he stared at Dr. Lizard in front of him with wide eyes, saying, Is this your trump card? So stupid. After saying that, Liu Hao did not allow Dr. Lizard to breathe and went forward to punch him in the head continuously. For Liu Hao in Superman form, 10 punches can knock Dr. Lizard down, but he did not do so because it was still useful. Liu Hao just hit Dr. Lizard a few times appropriately to make Dr. Lizard lose consciousness. After Dr. Lizard completely fainted, Liu Hao released the Superman form and called the police station to ask them to come and deal with Dr. Lizard and lock him up for a few days. The policeman Shen Long who received the call was very nervous and said quickly, Brother Fong, something big happened? The police in our bureau who were infected by the Lizard Man's potion have all lost control and broken free from their restraints. It's time to deal with the Lizard again. Liu Hao thought impatiently, and then asked calmly, Have you checked it out? 
Where did the infected lizardmen go? The police replied, We checked, and almost all of them went to the direction of the Osborne building. Liu Hao looked up and glanced at the third floor of the Osborne building, thinking of Gwen's pure and lovely face, and felt that he had to save her. In the biological research room of the Osborne Group building, Gwen had successfully produced an antidote. She was surprised to hold the antidote and was about to leave the building, but she didn't expect that as soon as she went out, a lizard monster jumped out from the corner of the corridor. Dr. Connors? That's not right. Superman should have dealt with you, Gwen said to herself. But soon, she found that the size of this lizard man was much smaller than Dr. Connors. This is not Connors. However, she didn't have time to think about it at this moment, and Dr. Lizard's infected rushed straight at her. Gwen saw that the situation was not good, so she ran away, turned another corner, and successfully entered the elevator. When the elevator door was about to close, the lizard man leaped with all his might, stretched out his hands like a javelin and stabbed at Gu Tung. Fortunately, the elevator door closed at the last moment, leaving only a crack, and Gwen took the elevator downstairs safely. But she didn't expect that there were more lizard men downstairs. What's going on? Ghost. Six lizard men slightly smaller than Dr. Lizard slowly approached Gwen like zombies. Although she held the antidote in her hand, the antidote was injected, and the six people would not give her a chance to inject. Gwen retreated with the antidote tightly in her arms, muttering to herself, It's over. Where is Superman now? As if she heard the call, Gwen's voice just fell, and a gunshot rang out, and the leg of a lizard man who was rushing towards her was directly shot off. Gwen looked in the direction of the gunshot, and the second figure that made her feel extremely handsome tonight came into view. Liu Hao was alone, holding two guns, rolling quickly, and using the gun fighting ability skill to fight with the lizard men one by one. In the dim light of gunfire, Liu Hao's European and American skeleton outline, Asian skin, and handsome face shuttled through the lizard men. Gwen knew Liu Hao. It can be said that everyone in New York knew Liu Hao. He was like a real-life superhero. His fame in New York was second only to Superman. Under Gwen's gaze, Liu Hao ended the battle in a few seconds, leaving the lizard man in front of him seriously injured but not dead. After all, they were police officers, and they could recover by injecting antidotes, and they could also gradually recover from gunshot wounds with Dr. Lizard's medicine. Liu Hao dealt with the group of minions, looked at Gwen, and then raised a pistol to her. Gwen was stunned and didn't understand why this handsome man known as the Light of New York pointed a gun at her. Before Gwen had time to speak, Liu Hao fired a gun the next second. The gunshot rang out, and the bullet flew over the right side of Gwen's neck and hit the lizard man who was going downstairs behind her. Only then did Gwen realize that Liu Hao was shooting the lizard man behind her. In less than two minutes, all the police arrived and carried the lizard man on the ground away. Liu Hao put away his gun, walked calmly to Gwen, and asked, What's wrong, little sister? Were you scared just now? I... I'm not that vulnerable. Gwen quickly retorted, holding up the antidote to prove her ability. Okay, okay, you are really amazing. If it weren't for you tonight, New York would be a mess. Liu Hao praised. Gwen was a little confused by the sudden praise, but she was still very happy in her heart. After all, she had just seen Liu Hao's heroic figure and had developed a feeling of admiration for him. But she didn't want Liu Kong to see it, so in order to hide the embarrassment, Gwen handed Liu Hao the antidote and said, I'll leave this to you. I believe that you known as the Light of New York, will help us solve everything. Liu Hao took the antidote developed by Gwen and responded, Okay, thanks to you today. If you are free tomorrow, I can treat you to dinner on behalf of the citizens. Seven o'clock in the evening. Gwen answered excitedly, but then felt that she seemed too proactive, so she changed her words. I mean, if I finish my homework early tomorrow and don't know where to go to play, I'll probably, maybe, be free tomorrow night at seven o'clock, and I prefer Chinese food. Liu Hao smiled slightly without exposing Gwen's reserve and said, Okay, contact me at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Goodbye, Gwen. Liu Hao said goodbye to Gwen and left. Gwen, who was left behind, took a long time to react. Huh? How did he know my name? Liu Hao took the lizard mutation serum back and gave it to Banner to make it in batches to restore the police and other citizens to normal. However, for Dr. Lizard, Liu Hao did not let him turn back to human, but tied him up in the newly built laboratory, preparing for Banner and Peter to conduct experiments. Mr. Liu Hao, why don't we turn Dr. Connors back? Peter asked in confusion. Liu Hao crossed his arms and said calmly, because he will be our experimental subject to perfect his self-repair serum. Experimental subject? Use people? God, Mr. Liu Hao, I can't do it. I really can't. Peter quickly refused. Liu Hao, okay, leaned against the table and asked calmly, why? Peter, don't you want to be a scientist? Scientists need experiments. In order to accurately create serums suitable for humans, human experiments are necessary. Peter resisted and lowered his head like a child. But I really can't. Mr. Liu Hao, human experiments are too cruel. Do you know what human experiments mean? 
Liu Hao explained to Peter patiently like an elder. In the next few decades or hundreds of years, there may not be ETA versions of fate. Sequel novels, go to Felu Novel Network. So what you do may be a key step in the progress of all mankind. Then let me ask you again, Peter, are you willing to conduct this human experiment for all mankind? Peter looked at Connors and thought of Uncle Ben, and finally gritted his teeth and answered, I understand, Mr. Liu Hao, I will do this research. The matter of Dr. Lizard was resolved, and Kingpin's forces also withdrew from New York. Liu Hao has been living quite easily recently. 0141063111 Felu 143581261. Liu Hao usually doesn't let the police officers have too much free time, and often arranges some projects to train their physical fitness. After all, the performance of these police officers is really bad. They are infected even when dealing with a lizard. They can't do without strengthening their training. The police occasionally complained, and someone noticed that Peter and Banner were different from them. These two run to the new laboratory every day, and they don't need training. A thin policeman muttered secretly. Another one who talked more also said, That's right, that Peter Parker is just a kid, not even as tall as my neck. I don't know if he has the strength. And Bruce Banner, he looks like a bloated otaku. He doesn't have the strength to move things, and it probably doesn't hurt to hit people. The police only complained a few words, and they also knew that they couldn't do the work of Peter and Bruce. The Liu family heard all these gossips and directly increased the amount of training so that they didn't dare to complain anymore. After all, they didn't know that Spider-Man and the Hulk were the top Marvel mutant heroes. Chapter 56 Teach Black Widow A Lesson Do you really want to compete with these two in strength? Little Spider-Man can punch 40 tons with full force. The Hulk is even more exaggerated. The angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. His defense and attack soar, and he can beat the Avengers so hard that they can't lift their heads. Although these two are nothing in front of him, the Superman, the entire police station combined is not enough to punch them. Corporal punishment alone cannot solve the problem. Fortunately, Peter and Banner are usually easygoing. Gradually, everyone has no prejudice against them, and even surprised and admired their talents in academic knowledge and learning ability. After the work of the police station is over, Liu Hao will also take time to go to the Black Mountain Prison, which New York criminals are afraid of, to teach Black Widow a lesson. It has been a while since the last time I visited Black Widow's gentle land. During this time, Black Widow Natasha Romanoff has recovered from the huge shock brought by Liu Hao and got used to prison life. Today, Black Widow was reading a book, but he looked up and saw Liu Hao, and his body reacted instantly. Liu Hao opened the door and approached Black Widow, who said nothing. Just like that, another four hours passed before Liu Hao left. As usual, Black Widow trembled and maintained her embarrassed appearance, while Liu Hao turned around and left as if nothing had happened. This girl is quite able to hold back, and with the effect of the infertility drug, she has many tricks to play with and a unique experience. Liu Hao thought to himself that it seems that he has to put her on the list of regular customers, so that she will be the fifth one. Just as he was thinking, Liu Hao came out of the Black Mountain prison and received a text message from an unfamiliar number. The message read, I'm Gwen Stacy, the high school student who's interning at Osborne. Last time I helped you develop the antidote for Dr. Lizard. You said that because I helped New York. So? Anyway, I'm free at 7 o'clock tonight. I like Chinese food, especially fish. You can check the calendar. Liu Hao looked at the message and felt that this girl was becoming more and more playful, so he called his assistant, Officer Chen Long, and asked him to go to Chinatown in advance to book a good live fish restaurant before 7 o'clock. After hanging up the phone, Liu Hao's mouth curled up, thinking that it seemed that the sixth guest was coming. Liu Hao then went to the appointment. This time he didn't wear a uniform or formal clothes, but just ordinary casual clothes. However, Liu Hao's burly figure, even casual clothes, can highlight his perfect figure. Seeing Liu Hao, whose arms were thicker than their necks, the foreigners at the scene cast their loving eyes on him, and even flirted boldly. But these gorgeous temptations were not attractive to Liu Hao, he thought these ordinary women were no different from garbage. Fortunately, Liu Hao's muscular body only attracted Americans, so the Chinese girls in Chinatown did not behave frivolously. Therefore, when the Americans dispersed, Liu Hao returned to peace. Not long after, Gwen came, wearing the good girl style common among American high school students. At a glance, it can be seen that she is different from those vulgar women who often hang out in parties and bars. This is the type that makes Liu Hao's eyes light up. As soon as she saw Liu Hao, Gwen sat directly opposite him with a book in her arms. Unlike ordinary people, she asked, Are you investigating me? Chief Liu Hao, are you going to use me to complete the mission? Liu Hao didn't expect Gwen to ask this but he thought it was interesting, so he smiled and responded. How did you guess? If that's the case, what would you do? Okay, I'll tell you slowly. Gwen showed her academic ability and analyzed. The first question is how I came up with this guess. Your phone number must have been learned from my classmate Peter Parker. He told me everything. He said you suddenly mentioned my name, 
and also talked about my internship at Osborne and mentioned that I could make an antidote. Liu Hao stroked his forehead gently. The Holland version of Spider-Man is a guy who can't keep secrets no matter in or out of the play. He confessed everything when Gwen asked him. Second question, what would I do? I would call my dad directly and tell him that you have bad intentions towards me. Definitely, this is assuming that you really have bad intentions towards me. But I don't believe that a sheriff would pay attention to ordinary people for no reason. There must be some ulterior motives. After listening to Gwen's reasoning, Liu Hao applauded and praised her good ideas, and then ruthlessly exposed. Is it possible that I know you because your father is the sheriff of the Washington Police Department, and I have the habit of investigating the details of my peers? Assuming that your reasoning is valid, I do have intentions towards you. Then may I ask, in that situation last night, if I really wanted to do something to you, couldn't I do whatever I wanted? And if I really had intentions today, I should have contacted you instead of you telling me that you were free. This series of questions and rebuttals stunned Gwen. After thinking clearly, Gwen lowered her head, like a child who made a mistake, and said, Okay, maybe I made a mistake, sorry Mr. Liu Hao. Liu Hao thought it was interesting and continued to have dinner with Gwen. This misunderstanding actually brought them closer together. Gwen was originally cheerful and had high emotional intelligence. Seeing that Liu Hao did not care about the past, she felt at ease to play with him. The two went shopping, watched movies, and visited the amusement park. After playing all the projects, Liu Hao sent Gwen home with satisfaction. Gwen said goodbye to Liu Hao and asked when she left, Mr. Liu Hao, I am very happy tonight. Thank you for the reward for the citizens of New York. Let's make an appointment next time when you are free. If you do more things that are beneficial to New York, it will be the best reward for me. Liu Hao responded. Gwen hurriedly said, Then can you accompany me to the aquarium next weekend on Saturday? My dad originally promised me, but then he had to work overtime. Liu Hao agreed, and Gwen entered the house with satisfaction. Liu Hao felt that he had taken the initiative. After all, Gwen is a smart girl among her peers, and naturally she will admire Liu Hao, a strong person who is full of security. Actually, Liu Hao also felt that it was not good to defile such a girl. But if she took the initiative to approach, that would be another matter. Although the three generations of stories are integrated, the Holland version of Peter does not like Gwen, so I am not stealing your girlfriend. Liu Hao thought so and drove away. Not far from Gwen's house, the phone rang. The caller was Tony, who had not been in touch for a long time. Liu Hao answered the phone. Tony on the other end of the phone said excitedly, Phone, cousin, are you free now? Come to my place, I have something good to show you. Liu Hao was not very interested at first. After all, what good things can Iron Man have? It's nothing more than a battle armor. Fancy things can't withstand the power of a punch of Superman. What's the use of being cool? However, Liu Hao knows Tony's personality very well. He is eager to show off his new work. If Liu Hao ignored him, this guy would keep calling to harass him, and as a cousin, he couldn't beat him up. What should he do? Liu Hao had no choice but to answer, I know, I'll be there soon, don't worry. After agreeing, Liu Hao went to Tony's villa and passed the JRVIS scan again. When he reached the basement, Liu Hao saw Tony in a silver white armor. He shouted excitedly, Liu Hao look see, this armor contains 80% vibranium. Liu Hao crossed his hands and said calmly, not bad. And his perfunctory attitude made Tony a little dissatisfied. Tony thought Liu Hao didn't know vibranium, after all, in his eyes, the police were usually slow. Let me tell you, vibranium, this is an extremely hard metal that can only be found in the mysterious African country Wakanda. You may not know about this metal. I know vibranium, it's as hard as adamantium. Liu Hao interrupted him. But what's the use of 80% content? Oh my god, Liu Hao, you really treat money as dirt. Do you know how many sports cars and mansions this armor can be exchanged for? Tony hurriedly explained, showing off his wealth while not forgetting to show off his knowledge. Go out, it's more accurate to test outdoors. This basement is too small to use. Seeing Liu Hao readily agreed and decided to test, Tony was stunned. He was just talking casually, but he didn't expect Liu Hao to be so stubborn and actually want to try it. What surprised Tony even more was that Liu Hao didn't carry a pistol, but a sniper rifle that was more than two meters long. It's normal for American police to carry guns after get off work, but isn't this sniper rifle too much? Do we have to be on guard against the Air Force after get off work? Tony muttered to himself. After Liu Hao said he wanted to test it, he immediately went out took out the box containing the sniper rifle from his private car, and started to assemble it. Although Tony only mentioned it casually, since Liu Hao agreed to the test, he didn't want to spoil the fun, after all, face is important. So Tony said while debugging the armor, Beth, okay, I'll reduce the power of the vibranium armor to the minimum, so that the flight and speed will be reduced, and the weapons will not be activated to avoid accidentally hurting you. This armor, in addition to the 80% vibranium shell, is equipped with weapons and functions that are stronger than before. The shoulders have added a large area of long-range split bombs, and the two sides of the abdomen are equipped with additional powerful anti-gravity devices to increase the flight speed and strength. 
There are also laser weapons on the wrists, similar to laser swords, which can cut a lot of steel. It is perfect, no, it should be the most perfect at present. Tony talked big, and Liu Hao waved his hand to stop him. No need to reduce the power, just use the best state. Otherwise I can't say anything if you make excuses. Is the safe landing system installed? This is the equipment you want to use to deal with the villains. If you don't use full power, you won't find any problems if I shoot you down, Tony. Seeing Liu Hao so confident, Tony was a little unhappy and turned on the maximum power in a rage. Okay, maximum power, who made you my cousin? Tony flew to a high altitude. Vibranium was very heavy, but he improved the propulsion system and it became easier. It seems that the flight is fine, but unfortunately the content of vibranium is only 80%. Liu Hao said, I will simulate the combat state in a while. Combat state? How to simulate? Let me shoot at you? Tony asked with a smile. That's right. Liu Hao nodded. Isn't your armor equipped with split bullets? Fly up and shoot directly at me, and I will use a sniper to blow them all up. My split bullet can be divided into nine. Are you sure you can handle it? Tony said hurriedly, thinking that Liu Hao was more arrogant than him. Unexpectedly, Liu Hao answered directly. I will explode all nine split bullets and add one more to break your armor. Okay, you said it, Fong. Don't go to your aunt to complain if you are injured by my split bullet. Tony's mouth corners rose, and he was a little unhappy. JRVIS, scan Liu Hao, and the hit rate when shooting must reach more than 95%. Tony whispered to JRVIS. He was ready to let Liu Hao see his strength. He would injure him with a split bullet first, and then send him to the hospital. Anyway, the nearby hospitals were all invested by himself. The test began, and Tony flew to an altitude of 200 meters. After Liu Hao prepared his sniper rifle and indicated that it was okay, Tony ordered, JRVIS, fire split bullets at Liu Hao, adjust the armor power to 100%, and move forward at full speed. After receiving the order, Tony fired a bomb from the shoulder of his armor. The bomb split into nine in the air and flew towards Liu Hao with staggered trajectories. Tony's figure followed closely behind. Liu Hao fired alone. One shot hit the split bomb, and then loaded another, and hit again, and kept loading and firing, nine shots. Liu Hao blew up all the split bombs. Tony's face turned green. This kid could actually blow up all the split bombs. What surprised him even more was that Liu Hao had pointed the gun at him. No way. He really thought that one shot could destroy the vibranium armor that he spent half a month to build. Liu Hao locked the target, pointed directly at Tony, pulled the trigger, and the bullet rushed out. Tony was immediately panicked and dodged to the side. Unexpectedly, the bullet brushed the arc reactor on the chest of Tony's armor, which directly dimmed it. Sir, the reactor is detected to be abnormal. The armor is insufficiently supplied with energy, and it is about to lose balance and make an emergency landing. The warning sound of JRVIS was endless, and Tony's armor was like an out-of-control plane, smoking and swaying and slowly landing. Tony quickly activated the manual detachment system and landing device. After the armor was separated from the body, he landed smoothly with the help of the unfolded glider. I have said long ago that if the armor is not pure vibranium, you will lose with just one shot. Liu Hao approached with a gun and said directly to Tony, Then I will use pure vibranium next time? As soon as Tony finished speaking, he felt something was wrong. But the reactor cannot be covered with vibranium, otherwise it will not be able to dissipate heat. If it is covered with vibranium, it will be very difficult for me to move on the ground. It is not suitable at all. Liu Hao put away the sniper rifle and patted Tony on the shoulder. Don't always think about vibranium. You will make better armor and improve it slowly. Remember, don't be too proud. Next time I will help you test it. I hope your armor can last longer. After Liu Hao finished speaking, he put the sniper rifle in the trunk and drove away, leaving Tony in deep thought. This time, Tony's arrogance was completely eliminated. He should not be so conceited in the future, Liu Hao thought. After returning home, Wanda returned from a business trip, exhausted, but she still cast a glance at Liu Hao, and Liu Hao went to the closed campus. The next day, Wanda went on a business trip again, and Liu Hao let her go muttering, Why is there so much trouble in this mutant school? Liu Hao remembered that the mutant school in the movie was not so complicated. Perhaps Charles was silently contributing behind the scenes. Without him, these mutants would be in chaos. But it had nothing to do with Liu Hao. If Wanda wanted to deal with it, she would let her do it herself. Unless Wanda or her students were bullied, Liu Hao would intervene. In the following days, Liu Hao's life went on as usual. After getting used to the high-intensity training, his colleagues in the police station no longer complained. After all, the improvement in physical fitness made them happy. Chen Long a Chinese younger brother, occasionally thanked Liu Hao, Brother Feng, everyone is very grateful that you forced them to train, now everyone is as strong as an ox, it's just that I am embarrassed to thank you directly, so I sent me to express my gratitude on behalf of everyone, no need to thank you, keep training well, next time you encounter a situation, you must deal with it tactfully and don't embarrass the New York Police Department, 
Liu Hao responded like this. The implication is that even if you are cannon fodder, you must be a cannon fodder that can last longer. Chen Long nodded and went back to convey Liu Hao's words. After finishing the police station, Liu Hao's address book became busy again. Gwen invited him to the aquarium in the afternoon. In the evening, the general's daughter Betty asked Liu how to have dinner with her, and Michaela from Shapeshifting King Kong booked Liu Hao's time tonight. Even tomorrow night, the judge of the killer union made an appointment with Liu Hao three days in advance on the pretext of being free on a business trip. Really, there are so many women. Fortunately, I have the physique of Superman, otherwise I don't know which woman I will fall in bed with one day. Liu Hao muttered to himself, like an emperor turning over a son of God, choosing a partner in the mobile phone address book. However, Liu Hao did not have too much entanglement. Among these women, he would definitely choose Gwen. Age is one factor, and the other is that she has not been completely conquered, while other women have already obeyed his orders. Do you still need to review after the exam? You know with your eyes closed that you should choose Gwen.